Good morning, my friends. I hope you're well, or whatever time of day it is when you watch. But I am uh, getting through, ordered the insulation, and they're getting that all rallied up. Uh, and I'll tell you, man, one thing I'm learning about, you know, if you're going to build your own tiny home or do what I'm doing or building a home or self-contract, get your stuff from these building materials companies. And I know you're thinking, well, they just sell to contractors. No, they sell to individuals. They just don't tell you. And they're in places that are not high traffic. They don't have to advertise because they have their clientele. And where, where I live is such a building boom. These guys stay busy. But the one important thing is that you get a good personalized service. Now, you can't order from big box stores, but things get screwed up and delivery gets screwed up. And uh, they get so tied up, they don't guarantee anything. The thing is, is they may not have everything and it might be a little bit cheaper and again, it may not be. But the one thing you get is a good personalized service from professionals that know these materials. They know, you know, what you need. Like when I walked in the other day and I sat down with Jeff at the building materials place and he goes, is somebody just telling you that, you know, why, why is it you think you need um, rock wool insulation? I'm like, I, I I've been doing a lot of research on it. I mean, yeah, there's a reason why I want it. And he goes, good. I just make sure because some people just tell you that and you don't need it. Fiberglass will work. And, and in a sense, he's right. But there's a reason why fiberglass is not as good as rock wool and there's a lot of properties. And he agreed. He said, absolutely, you have been. I said, you know, the, it's waterproof and water resistance, mold mildew resistance, fireproof. It's, uh, it, it's insulation capabilities. I mean, the properties of it are much better and the soundproofing is amazing. And, and I'm going to be using it under my house, which, you know, uh, fiberglass with a mold mildew eventually, it would not work well under your house. And they used to do that under your house. They put fiberglass insulation, try to put foil over it, but you get moisture up under your house. Eventually you're going to have to replace that fiberglass. Whereas in the lifetime of rock wool, which is infinite almost, you're not going to have to worry about that. I get it strapped in there and under the house and good and we're good, you know. Unless for some reason something happens, I've got to replace a little bit up in there. It shouldn't be on that deal. So anyway, we're getting that done. But that's a little thing to uh, realize, to understand is when you uh, are buying this stuff, that these building materials places are in, you know, like flooring companies. There's one across in North Charleston from where I go uh, pick up things because I, you know, I'm a part-time medical courier. I go pick up from that office. There's a flooring supplier over there that supplies to contractors. They don't advertise. It's not a store. It's just a, a you know, a wholesaler. Well, I can walk through the door there. I haven't yet, but they'll sell me flooring. They're not going to say no because it's business, you know. And being that I'm, you know, affiliated across the way, they'll probably extend that courtesy and you look for things like that and that's the thing like some of these youtube channels like jeff thorman i talk about him sometimes he's talked about this you know look beyond the big box stores and he goes believe it or not you're probably gonna get a better deal than the big box stores they can actually be more expensive because most people think that's the only place they can get them from you know and if you're building a house and you know it's it's one thing if you go to one of these companies and say i just need a couple of packs and they're like they may sell it to you and then again they may not they say well we only sell in bulk if you need 53 bags of it we'll sell it to you we'll deliver it you know i guess that depends i haven't gotten that no from anybody yet on that deal you know most people that are looking to buy they're looking to do it on a big project, you know, or they're building a house or doing something. So they know that. But other than that, I've got to get to the uh, house down there and I need to do some caulking and I need to do, oh, sorry, man. I need to do, I didn't know if that truck was going to go or not. Sorry about that. Uh, I need to do some caulking and I got to do some great stuff foam around the windows and doors. I'm going to get all that done. Do the water treatment, the Thompson's water seal on those floor joists under the house. And then the insulation should be in Friday, I think he said. And so we can get that in Friday this weekend, hopefully. If all works well this weekend, Saturday, I can get under there and get that insulated and get that house done because... I think there's a 50% chance of rain Sunday, and I don't want to have to wait any longer. I get this house insulated and done, and then I would have to get under there again, really. The plumber and electrician is going to have to get up under there for a few things to do, but I won't have to for a while. So, 
other than that, all is well, and we're going to get on this. I'm going to get one thing done at a time, man. I've gotten over the biggest hump for my the big inspection. I'm so glad that confirms that we're good on this. I don't have to worry about major obstacles here, hump, you know, humps in the road. You know, be small things. But the, once the insulation is inspected, there's not another one until they do the lighting fixtures, and that'll pass. And after that, it's final inspection. Occupancy certificate for the house. We hope January, February. So let's see what we can get done here, folks. That we will. Oh, so you know how I've said from the beginning of this, things sometimes go too smoothly, and then there's always that little hump in the road. And uh, when you're in a process like this, whether you're building a bigger house or a tiny house or a shed to home conversion, doesn't make much difference. There's gonna be obstacles. And I've learned of a new one this morning. Apparently there is a shortage of rock wool because rock wool insulation has become extremely popular. Go figure, isn't that my luck? It's just my luck. Go figure, you know. But we are, uh, we're working through it. They couldn't get the, um, three inch thick by 24 wide for the ceiling of my house. Excuse the phone there. But uh, I told them, I said, see if they can get you the 720 square feet of the 16 inch wide by three inch and I'll just have to double, you know. It'll be a little bit more extra, but we can, it'd be the same money. If it can get me 720 square feet more of that and he's gonna call some more people in some of his yards up in North Carolina, see what he can do. We might just have to get it all 16 inch and deal with it. And I'm okay with that. Listen, I'm willing to shift and improvise to do that. But worst case scenario on this is I, I may have to put fiberglass in my ceiling. And I, I really don't know what to think about that because I just don't want to use fiberglass insulation. I don't want to do it. But, you know, we, we do what you got to do, you know. Um, I don't know. You know, I really don't know at this point. I'm kind of hoping uh, we can get this rock wool and make it happen. So let's, let's cross our fingers. He said he'd let me know some point later today or in a little while what he finds out. There, those are the challenges that lie in this thing. And, and, I'm not ultimately experienced on this, so I don't know if a lot of people would carry that. Apparently he said it's it's a shortage with a lot of suppliers. So we shall see. What's going on, my friends? Well, we got the uh insulation dilemma worked out, you know. It's always those little humps in the road as I talked about the last time I got on. Um they found some up in North Carolina. It'll be next Friday before it comes in. That's okay. The bulk of it is already here. And I think like Monday or Tuesday, they'll have it to me and I can start insulating. So this weekend, I'm going to start prepping. I've got a lot of caulking and uh, the, some of the small amounts of the doors and cracks foam to do and prepping and getting the uh, two by four trim done for the, uh, for the drywall. So we'll get that done. Other than that, all is well. It got a little chilly on this last couple of days. I had to wear my jacket here and just snacking on me some pork rinds. Listen, if you're on the diet I'm on, this ketovore carnivore diet, these are your new potato chips, pork rinds. And the baconettes hit it out the park with the honey mustard flavored ones. Oh yeah, they're good. I'm telling you. Get rid of the potato chips and just eat pork rinds. They are so good. I'm telling you. The only thing is, you bite into one and it's crumbs go everywhere so eating them over the bag does help <laughs> but anyway other than that just start getting everything prepped and it'll be pretty cool this weekend as much as i can in this week so i told him i said just give me that that the bulk of it first i know i pay two delivery fees i understand but i've got to while we have good weather and there's no rain thank god I can get up under that house and everything else is dried in. We're good. I just need to, I've got to get the hardest of the work done, which is getting under that house and getting that done. So that will be getting it done, my friends. And then it's, once I get this done and get it inspected, Clancy and I are going to, we're going to map out getting the drywall in 
and the work starts getting the mudding and the taping, but we're going to get that done. I am committed to doing it myself. I, you know, I, I can't be afraid of that. I'm not afraid of it. It can be done. It's going to be some work, but I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done. I see some of these guys on the internet doing it, and like last night I saw a video, and I was like, this is the complete opposite of what I've been taught. And I was like, I don't think he's doing it right. And then he showed in the video, he's like, yeah, there's a little hump right there. We'll have to fix that later. I'm going to have something in front of it. I'm like, you didn't do your taping right if you've got a hump in the taping in your drywall. He didn't hang it right. The guy was hanging it from the floor up to the ceiling. Just, just the complete opposite of what everybody has you know taught that I've learned from so far so that's the best example I can tell you is when you're watching tutorials and like I say I'm not the be all end all and I don't claim to be and I'm not gonna be you know I'm just talking about my experiences what have helped me what I've learned from some of my frustrations and it helped you maybe figure out what you want to do if you do a shed to tiny home conversion or a tiny home or whatever you do you know hell even in your own home what you decide to do because it is an interesting experience self-contracting versus to hire a contractor not to mention it saves a lot of money based on what I was quoted to build this from ground up it saved me 85 to a hundred thousand dollars I'm like yeah I think I'll save a little bit of money doing this might be a little bit of a headache but we're gonna get it done so just be careful in some of these tutorials because it can get to end up down a rabbit hole real quick so but other than that I'll keep you posted what goes on and next time you see me I'll be doing something in regards to insulation and getting everything prepped for that so alrighty folks I am back at the property here back at the house got a lot of prep work to do here for insulation that we do I think the first thing I need to do around here is I need to vacuum up. I've got a lot of sawdust where they've been drilling and a lot of stuff I need to clean up around the edge because when you're caulking over that stuff, it doesn't always mix too well. It doesn't at all. There's a couple of things I want to share here. Now, mind you, I want to preface something here before I even get started. Definitely want to preface something is uh, this channel is not a how-to channel. It is not. Please don't misinterpret that. Because I know some folks could be watching going, if it was me, I'd have done that. And that's horrible. I would never have done that. But like, that's that's not what this channel's intended for. It's not intended, intended to teach you something that I'm not a professional at. Trust me. I'm not the be-all end all. And I don't claim to be the be-all end all. But the good thing about it is that it's intended to kind of show you about what I'm doing, what I'm learning. And my frustrations and the process here of this if you're going to do a shed to tiny home conversion which is something very specific and very new so a lot of people are doing in fact i may have said it on, on my last video is that the inspector said dude you're the first in the county if not one of the first but i'll say you're the first that's legally doing it and it's new for us and we're going to start coding this better to where we understand what's going on so we inspect we know what the situation is not that we're not going to approve it it just has to be done right and we have to set it up so it's a very new thing and I'm kind of early in on that thing. But like I say, my experiences can help you decide what you want to do. Maybe some things I'm doing you like to do, good ideas, you know? I mean, in fact, it's a shed to tiny home conversion, you know, so. But I'm gonna show some things here real quick that I'm gonna do here that I've learned from other channels. And I've mentioned some of these channels, like Jeff Thorman, that Renovision DIY up in Canada. Amazing channel for stuff. Matt Risinger, he did a video on what I'm about to talk about on preparing for insulation, the things you do before then. And I'm gonna do this because it makes a world of sense. Not to mention some of it, the inspector said, yo, you need to caulk between the floor and the bottom plate of the wall, which I intended to do. I just told him, I didn't wanna do any of that until I got the clearance from you. you know? um, he said, uh, do your spray foam around the windows between the frame. The thing is, my windows are really small and I'm a little nervous about that. However, comma, a couple things I got here. Give me two seconds. I got the Great Stuff Pro 14 Pro Gun. It's like three of them. I think there's a 15. I don't know. Maybe it's the length. But I got this. Yes, it's 60 bucks. And then there was a, a can of a can of cleaner that you need with that. You need to get that cleaner. It's basically it's like an acetone cleaner, you know. That stuff they always talk about, I think you've seen some of this stuff, you really have. If you haven't, go over to some of these channels and, and watch them. And, and you know, as I was saying, 
yesterday is some of these channels can give you bad information. I saw one that was like the complete opposite of what I've learned about drywall, so be careful. But you're gonna know when the majority of the people are telling you the same thing, you know something right about it. But this stuff is a lot larger can that goes into the gun. This lasts a lot longer than your smaller cans. And a lot, everyone says it, this is just something about it. Now this says it does 16 windows. I don't have 16 windows, but the cool thing is there's other things that I have to foam here. So be it that it may, I have enough in one can to do this. So. You've got that, and I've used the other cans, but I've never used these, so it's gonna be an interesting experience learning how to get that attached to the gun. I think it just pops in and it twists. Uh, you can, you, as long as you keep the valve closed, it'll last for 16 to 30 days or something like that, but they said within that 30 days, you squirt more out of it and do it again and give you 30 more days, which is kind of weird. But if you're gonna take it off, that you need to put the acetone cleaner and you need to clean the gun out so it will last for you. And they said just keep getting the foam off the top of it. Another thing they said is that when you're using this tip, be careful what surfaces you're rubbing it on. It can damage the tip and uh, create a puncture in that because it's supposed to seal it. Because um, this stuff gets like cement. It hardens, it'll ruin the gun. So that's that. So another thing, okay. Is you're going to need a caulk gun, as you probably know already you would. Now, I got in a hurry and I was supposed to get clear. I wanted clear, but it doesn't matter the color because sheetrock is going over it. But this is the DAP Dynaflex 230. There's this and another brand that Matt Rising was talking about. This is lesser cost, but he said one works just as good as the other. So DAP is a good brand. Everybody uses it for indoor and outdoor caulking. You can use this for outdoor as well as indoor. And this stuff is flexible. And it's great because obviously your house is shifting and moving and moving around. Just caulk all of these baseboards and get maybe uh, caulking between each set of uh, studs. So each kind of like a, a picture window of it, you know, just in between each. So a lot of, a lot of the caulking. But the first thing is just do the baseboards, get all that stuff. A lot of it is for, uh, energy efficiency and for uh, pests, insects and stuff. This That was the big thing about Matt Risinger's videos that for pests and insects, it's really good for that sort of thing. So, gotta have a, a caulk gun and do that, make sure that is done right. Another thing that I'm gonna do, and I'll show you that in two seconds. As small as this place is, I think I got too many. I got three bottles of this from Amazon. But I'm gonna keep it for extra because I can put it out in my shed and I can put it in other places around my house. You can put it outside under your house. Water may wash it away, but inside here, this stuff here will soak into the wood as well. And you remember I did the I did the boric care treatments, boric acid and zinc borate. I think it's just borate. Some of the same and similar chemical, but the, the borate treatment is very important. It's already been done on this house for termites and stuff. So. But another thing you want to do before you, right before you insulate, is on the, in the middle of each of the studs on the walls, boric acid for roaches and stuff. It, it goes for roaches and various other things, but mostly cockroaches and things like that. It's a boric acid powder, and you just put it in between the bays and around your shower and all the crevices and do that. Honestly, I think this one bottle will handle the whole house, but I got three of them. I, it wasn't but a few bucks a bottle on Amazon, so I think it was worth it. So we're gonna do that. So that's all the preparation I'm doing. Um, further preparation, I've got to um, do some two by four, hang some two by fours on the rafters up here. I've talked about for the front wall and over here to get the drywall hung. And I'm probably just gonna go ahead and do it before I do insulation. I don't think he's gonna say anything, it's all there. But I'm gonna have to get up in there. I had to call the builder and say, hey, it seems like it's, sturdy but am i okay crawling around up there i don't want anything caving in he goes no you're fine you should be fine right now so climbing up in there because i'm only using that up that loft area for storage i'm not using that for anybody to get up there hang out sleep it's not that big it's just not made for that so but we're gonna utilize every bit of the space in this house that we can so i've got that to do so once we get that um the bulk of this the insulation should be in monday or tuesday i think it was a little late uh, they took a little long to get them in and get it ordered, but uh, 
I told him, I said, if I can get that in Monday or Tuesday, I know I'm paying two delivery fees, but I can get the underside of the house, which is going to be a lot of work. I've got some prep of doing that with the water seal stuff and, and cutting the straps. Uh, I'll show you that when we do insulation, all these vinyl straps I'm using to hold up the insulation under the house. But if I can get that in and get the walls and stuff, the ceiling insulation, which is the 24 wide by three inch, won't be until next Friday, until this coming Friday. It was a week from yesterday. Today is Saturday. Um, and that's one that's fine. I'll pay two delivery fees, but not in a hurry on that. I can do some other prep work until then. So it'll be another week, week and a half before I get this insulated and everything done. And once that's done, we inspect and we go to drywall. Got to get that ordered and it'll be another week or so, a couple weeks. I would hope to have drywall done maybe by the end of November, but we'll see. Start really getting things done and prep work in December. Maybe January or February being in this house, we hope so. Anyway, let's see what we can get done. Usually a pair of scissors could cut the top of this uh, caulk, but I gotta get some wire cutters. Got all the baseboards caulked and in the middle of the studs. Three tubes of caulk, not bad. I just used all that almond caulk I bought. I was trying to get it all clear, but I guess it's kind of good that I have it kind of an almond colored or white so the inspector sees it. Uh, I'll tell you what, this Tyvek suit, this is not the Tyvek brand one. I got this at Harbor Freight, but I'm gonna tell you, I used the Tyvek brand one when I was working up under the house. I think this suit is much stronger than the Tyvek brand, it's a lot cheaper. This thing is is uh, pretty durable. Uh, I got two of them. I don't know if I'm gonna use two of them, but once I start getting up under the house, I'm gonna have to have another one. Cause you have to wear this when you're uh, doing insulation. You don't want to get all that stuff on. You want to wear gloves. Uh, I'll tell you something I am doing kind of cool. Here's another thing I've learned. I preface that I have learned. This is in a, this is in a how to channel tutorials because some of y'all have done dry um, insulation with rock wool you probably have your own method but you're gonna open this up a bread knife don't go buy a specialized insulation knife four dollars on amazon everybody says your bread knife works just fine it'll work on if you want to cut fiberglass insulation uh, we are using rock wool however on this house and it's going to take a little uh a moment to get that done the biggest of the work is going to be under the house all that strapping that I have to do, so we're gonna get it done. So now, I wanna get the great stuff on. Let's see what we can do with that. This should be interesting. This thing's a whole new beast compared to just buying the can of it. And uh, excuse me, one second, get that phone, there we go. Get the old camera. Except buying just the cans and doing it. But you know, the cool thing is you got a valve here and you can regulate your flow in this thing. These tiny little tubes you can use to go in these little crevices by the window back over here, right there. Go in, let's see if I can do my weatherman thing here. That's what sound it makes. I don't know if I'm gonna spray foam in the middle of these windows in the frame, because I'm a little nervous about it expanding into the vinyl windows, and then I've got a problem with my windows won't open. That's happened before. But if I can get this tip, uh, I get this tip where it's spraying a very small stream. I might be okay with it. Um, I'm gonna have to test spray it outside a little bit and see what my what my bead is. I'm gonna look at the box and read the directions. I was watching videos on YouTube of this. Hey, YouTube University, folks, I'm telling you, just like me and everyone else, it's where you're gonna learn. So let's see what we can get done with this. Well, the tiny tips proved to be failures. I don't want to stay on the end of the gun. It would be perfect, but this is working just fine. I know when I get done with this, I need to to uh, get the acetone, the cleaner, and get all that cleaned off the tip, because if you don't clean that, it's not gonna work. So working on the door, and there's really tight gaps. I may have to caulk more so than uh, use this. So we'll get it done. Uh, this is the gap. It's Barely a half an inch. 
but it, it changes in each window and it gets smaller like over here and it opens up. That's just too small of a gap and I worry about that. I put a little bit in this window just to test, just a tiny bit on one side and uh, I can control the the uh, nozzle with it, but I just, I don't know if I'm gonna do it all these windows at all. Tell you what, that, that foam dries quick. I only sprayed this about an hour ago. Didn't take long for that foam to seal right up. So, I am taking a break to get something to eat real quick. It's Wendy's, no surprise. Of course, that's not the only place I eat, folks. But, when I'm eating a burger, bunless burger, as I always do, it's Wendy's or it's a few other places. And it's amazing how you will notice whose hamburgers are horrible and whose aren't when you thought they were good. Some of these places like Sonic, when the bun and everything together makes it good, then you just eat the patty by itself and it's awful. You never want one again. Seriously, try it sometime. And Sonic isn't the only place. So. But you know, the only burger I'll eat at McDonald's, bunless, is the quarter pounder because those, I've seen them do it. They're not frozen like everything else is. Everything else is frozen. But everything else is horrible for you. But the quarter pounder bun patties with a little bacon, some pickles, not bad sometimes. It isn't my first choice by any stretch. I know this is weird what I'm doing. Mayonnaise. You take a little bitty tiny nip off the bun like a mouse. Occasionally. Not all the time. Just to remind me that, yep, yeah, it's not good for you. It was in the bag. But anyway, my windows, man... I, I'm real reluctant about putting spray foam in those windows. The gaps in the, the windows, like in a lot of these houses, the gaps are usually about a half an inch or more. The gaps in my windows are not even that. And I'm afraid to um, squirt that stuff in there and it expands into my vinyl windows and they're hard to get open. Clancy said they're having a little bit of problem with that. He seems to think he knows it's... It's the foam that they shot there. I said, they used the wrong foam for starters. Just went in there with gung-ho on it. But, I think what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna take some of that rock wool and stuff it in there real good and I'm gonna caulk over the top. So, I'll go back to Lowe's and I'll get some of the 230 white flexible. So they sees it's in there and I've done it. And I think, that's going to work better because it's flexible. It doesn't expand. And, you know, it'll last a long time. Hopefully forever, but you know how that is. But when they put those windows in, they use the flashing tape and that adhesive really well. So it's sealed. You know, I don't see light in there at all. I saw one place at my front door down below, under the house where there was a gap. When I get up under there, I need to get that foam under there really good. I'm taking that foam under there when I insulate, and I'm gonna hit all those places really thoroughly, so. Because where they drilled holes for all the electrical and plumbing, we need to seal that off. I need to get all that sealed for that because of uh, pests, for one, and, and efficiency, so. Be that man. So that's what I where I'm at with that. So my next thing here in a little bit is to get up under that house and spray the uh, water sealant, the water, Thompson's water seal <clears throat> on the center floor joist. Get all that done, get ready for insulation first of the week. And see if we have much, how far we can get with this. I get this house insulated over the next week and a half then we can move on to sheetrock. In a few weeks, maybe, we can have electricity on this house. But all it's going to be on how long it takes me to get that stuff taped in mud. That's going to take me a while to do that. So, let's see what we can do today, my friends. Let's see what we can do. I 
I tell you, it feels so good knowing I'm at this point of insulation and ready to go to drywall here soon. But I just got up under that house and I, I, I've got to get another gallon of Tompkins water seal. And in the center part, I guess I've got some cans of spray of the water seal. As I'm insulating, I'm just going to hit it with the spray and just do that route. That's all I can do. Because I don't want to get up under the house no more than I have to. And I can tell you what, it's going to be some work getting up under there, getting that insulation. Lord have mercy. I'm going to tell you folks, that's going to be some work. That it is. I hit my hand and I don't know how I did it. That's another thing. I hit my hand and stuff and... You hit yourself, you don't even realize you do it sometimes. You're busy working and stuff. But uh, we're getting there. I've got all the uh, all of the uh, windows done. Everything caulked. The only thing I gotta do is go in and clean up and shave off all the extra foam from the electricians and the plumbers and myself. Then get ready to, I'll put the uh, boric acid in there like I was talking about and uh, get that thing insulated uh, I just don't know how long it's going to take me to get up under the house and get that stuff insulated the good thing is that the insulation you've got uh, 16 on center you got 14 inches between those joists so they'll fit in there snug but getting one strap across and then I'm going to take in the center of each bat about three of them across I'm going to Put a cross strap like a cross one big one and then one two and three and at the end i've got to cut off about a foot and stuff it in so take a little bit of work but we're going to get it done folks that we are so um get that thompson's water seal and hit that real quick and then hopefully by tuesday or wednesday i'll have an afternoon to get up in there and start insulating i'm going to know how long it's going to take me by then so we're gonna get it done, folks. That we will. 